All right, guys, you can see, done. Finally, for the majority, got it done. I still got landscaping fabric that's gotta go in there. It's on order, it's actually been shipped. Just waiting for it to arrive um, on one of the box trucks. And then when we get that laid down, I've actually got a, a 60 inch by 20 foot long table that's gonna go in there. And then we've got to move all of our seed propagation stuff in there. Yes, this tunnel is our new, uh, to me, 12 by 32 um, DIY kit from Bootstrap Farmer. We are turning this into a seed propagation slash maybe some on-farm class, seed starting classes, maybe. Maybe, stay forward, stay tuned in for that, maybe. But so, you guys have watched the other um, little bit of videos that I've been teased with is that this was our 20 by 65 bootstrap former DIY kit that was there. As you can see, pretty empty over there now. Um, I wanted to move that away from our front yard to reclaim that back to grass or flower beds and then move everything up here in our field, our south field that has the other 20 by 100 kit in it. So I've got these two sitting side by side. They've got about five foot of space between them and then our other tunnel. So that's what I wanted. Any future tunnels will go on the other side of that. But specifically today, we're talking about this. I got it all put together. The last video you watched was us putting and cutting the plastic off the, off the end wall there. The rest of the plastic we used to build the front. And it's just a rinse and repeat from what I showed you in that last set of videos. That's why I did not film any of that. Basically, same thing. We've got channel lock, spring wire tracking, spring wire in here. I've got some insect netting on the door here. So that way you can see we've got insect netting on the back right yonder. So that hopefully is going to get some airflow in there. And we're going to run power up to this. So we'll be able to put a fan on that, an exhaust fan, and draw some of that heat out. I've got pretty high sidewalls. What I have learned from building the last two tunnels is I really needed to go taller um, with the sidewalls. And so we went four feet with this, as you can see. So that gives plenty of circulation underneath there to get all that hot air out, especially in such a small tunnel like this. We do not have the mass of a high ceiling to absorb some of that hot air to keep it off the seedling. So I needed to get as much airflow through this as I could. So once again, we did not film that but you guys kind of got the gist of it. You know, you guys watch me build that all metal 20 by 100 kit on this channel. Yeah, it's the same exact principles that I used to build the big kit as you used to build the small kit. Doesn't matter if this kit is 20 foot long or 200 foot long, it's the same principles. All you're doing is adding a little more length to the end of it. But yeah, we've got the sidewall up. This wall here, I decided not to put a door on because we don't need to be going in and out of the back of this. The only thing I have here is water. Water will be plumbed into this tunnel so we could start uh, do like our uh, bottom watering and microgreens and stuff like this. So there's no need to even have a back door on this, but we've got the rope in. We've attached it with the 7 16th eyelet bolts. They've got a nut and washer on the inside and just got some good quality nylon roping on the outside. Don't skimp here. Get some good quality rope. That way it'll last years and years. This rope here, was on the other tunnel, three years old now, almost three years old and it still looks brand new. So, I mean, get some good quality rope. It's not much, you're gonna spend two or $3 more than this cheaper yellow twine here. And this stuff does not hold up. Um, I'm using it here because this is all I've got right now. I need to actually go to the store and buy more of the good stuff. And then I will replace this with that. But basically same thing, I've just got roll up sides made out of conduit pieces. It's the exact same setup that I had on the DIY over there. All I did was reuse it. The only thing that we had for cost in this besides my labor is the ground posts. We were going to reuse the ground posts on the other DIY tunnel. But to be honest, the only reason why I didn't do it is because I was lazy. We have a lot of clay here in Kansas. Those things were packed full of clay. That's two and a half feet of clay in each one of those. I did not want to pound that clay out. And the reason why you would have to is because you to, to stamp this into the ground here in Kansas with this hard clay, you actually need good, sharp poles to get into the ground to cut into that clay. Uh, with these poles, you do know they're a pole, so they've got a hollow center. The mass of just the outside of that ring going into the ground will actually work like a knife and actually pound those into the ground. There, if I reuse those and did not knock the clay out of it, it would be literally like punching your hand through the clay. I tried it, I bent a couple poles trying to hammer it in. 
I decided to go and spend a couple hundred dollars and just buy new ground posts and then I cut them in half to reuse for this kit. I will repurpose those at a later time. I just did not have the time and really, to be honest, I was lazy. I didn't want to knock that out. So it was easier for me just to spend the 200 bucks and get this. So literally, we've probably got less than $300 of extra money incorporated into this tunnel versus when the tunnel sat there. We reused everything, plastic, everything. The plastic's going on next year will be three years. Um, as you can see, these lines here is not an imperfection in the plastic. It's actually where the poles here used to sit here. Um, I had a couple holes from some damage on that other tunnel that you guys have seen in other videos. So to get bypass that, I could shift this plastic. I had plenty of plastic here, since this is only half the size of that. So I could shift it and cut those bad spots out. So in turn, doing that, cutting the bad spots out, I had to shift this plastic over a couple feet. So you could probably get these to line up on these. To be honest, it's just cosmetic. It's not making a bit of difference. Nobody's even gonna even pay attention to these here, to be honest, and I think they will go away with time. But guys, this is the look of it. I'm pretty excited. Like I said, we went above and beyond a little bit and we painted all the wood in here white and sealed it. Um, I didn't do it over there. I just used a little bit of uh, water sealant, some Thompson's water seal, and it still got a little bit of mold, a little bit of damage on it. So I sanded all that off and then I chose to paint it white with a good quality exterior paint just to kind of cosmetically make it look a little decent. Um, but yeah, this is it right here, guys. Uh, until next time, next time you'll see us get the table in here and maybe we'll get some trays started.